Hello Aries, how are you? Welcome to your October 2016 love and general readings. I hope you all had an okay September. I know there was a lot going on. Um, and let's see what's going on for October. Also a reminder, I am on Instagram, um, Jane International, if you feel like following. I may um, be setting up a Facebook at some point as well too. So I'll keep you posted on that. Here we go, Aries, love, energies, October I don't like that shadow, sorry. Remove this. See that a little bit better. Okay, we can see all those. Okay. So Queen of Swords in the center of the reading. Okay. Um can be a challenge. It can be a um a lack of understanding of your circumstances, a lack of understanding of what your partner is doing, okay? And I feel that this is more just an energy as opposed to a person. Here you are, the emperor, and here is maybe your partner or maybe someone in your life, um, knight of cups reverse. You are strong, okay? The emperor is the king of kings, right? The major arcana, um, <laughs> strong, independent, and not necessarily one to play games, okay? You, you can, and you usually win, but um, you also don't like to do that, all right? In terms of you and your partner, I'm seeing a very distinct line here you being separated by the Queen of Swords. Queen of Swords reversed, like I said, a lack of understanding, a lack of like, hey buddy, like what's your motive? Like what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to say? Um, I feel as though their messages towards you could be very confusing. Um, confusing, a little bit mixed. Um, you may have issues understanding, um, purpose and intent, okay? Now, it will all work itself out. I don't necessarily want you to freak out and, you know, feel like it's you're never going to understand. I think it will work itself out. It will sort itself out the way it's supposed to with the Wheel of Fortune, okay? But um, that comes in time. So if you have a partner that is not being clear or you have a partner that is doing things that just kind of like don't make sense or they might be acting out in some way, I feel as though there's a connection with a fear, fear of progress more than anything, fear of moving the relationship into the next level. This could even indicate, you know, people randomly, um, some, for some of you, not all of you, but some of you, maybe your partner, like randomly breaking up with you or like trying to get out of the relationship. For others of you that are in established relationships or established bonds, it could just be them saying things or them doing things that are very out of character for them. Um, leaving you kind of being like, like what? <laughs> what are you, where is this coming from? And I feel as though there's a, like I said, a fear of progress, 
okay. Um, especially if your partner is a, you know, it's possible your partner might be a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Um, if they're not a water sign, obviously that doesn't apply, but um, because it's coming out as the, the king or the knight of cups here, it could even just indicate that emotional level, the emotional confusion, right? Um, and with the Ten of Pentacles reversed, this is where I'm getting that idea of progress, right? That idea of bringing the relationship into the next realm or into the next level. Um, when you have someone that you're just kind of starting to date, someone that you're just sort of getting to know, you might notice some squirrely behavior because I think they might be a little bit confused. Not you, your partner might be quite confused about what it is that they want from you, what they want from the relationship, and even what they want from themselves. I think you sort of have the quote unquote upper hand in this relationship at this point in time, okay? That you might be a little bit more powerful and more well grounded and have a better understanding of just like everything. Um, as opposed to your partner who's just sort of floundering a little bit, okay? And I think there's a question as to, you know, for many of you, you might be considering, some of you may be considering whether or not this is the relationship for you because obviously this person is just like too confusing to deal with. Others of you, obviously, if you're in long-term committed relationships, you may just be to the point where you're like, you know what, I am, I'm done. Like, you can just do what you want. Come back to me, come talk to me when you have something relevant to say, when you have something quality to contribute, because I just, like, I, I can't figure you out. I don't, I don't know what it is that you want from me, all right? And 10 of Wands reverse. You're, you're not going to carry the load of this relationship. Why should you be the only responsible one? Why should you be the one that has to do the hand-holding and be the one to bend and be malleable and, and to fix everything? And I feel like you're sort of abdicating that responsibility and saying, you know what, if you want this relationship to work, you need to put in the work. You know, I can't be sitting here deciphering mixed messages and like that's not fair to me. You're a very independent person. The emperor does not need anybody, right? The emperor does not um, need a relationship to be happy. He's perfectly capable of being happy on his own. And not to say that you want to be on your own or that you don't want a relationship, but you don't need one to be a productive, quality human being, okay? And I feel that this like strategy almost, this like throwing your hands up and being like, you know what, dude, like you need to figure it out. This, like I said, this strategy, I feel like there's a, an element of victory here for you, okay? The six of, of wands, um, putting the ball in their court a little bit and just kind of seeing how they handle it, seeing how they handle the responsibility and how they handle um, this like, I don't want to say expectation, but this like um, where they kind of have to grow up a little bit because the Knight of Wands and the Emperor are not on the same playing field at all. I mean, Knights are youthful energies. They're adolescent energies. They're not fully evolved emotionally, mentally, um, in terms of like even the physical world, in terms of their wealth and, and you know, finances and things like that like they're not fully on par with with the emperor so i feel that maybe some of you might be experiencing this mismatch if you're totally single this could really just be the state of your dating experiences right now like just no one is being clear people aren't being honest with you about how they really feel or what they really want out of their life. They could be dating you just to date you as opposed to because they actually really like you. And, and it kind of leaves you in a state of Queen of Swords like state of confusion and feeling unsure 
which is a frustrating energy for anybody, right? It's not necessarily the most um, welcome state of mind. Um, but I feel that this experience in general will be quite... Um, as oddly as, as odd as it seems, I feel like it might actually be productive for you, okay? Because now is a time where you can... Oh, I'm going to say something, and I hate saying this, because it's not a good thing right? In a relationship, it's, you know, I think every relationship and family counselor out there would say, don't do this. But sometimes it just kind of happens naturally, okay? And I feel that this is going to be a natural occurrence and not something that you're vindictively doing or that you're doing on purpose. But this word of a test comes out to me. And that this situation, you know, like I say, once you throw your hands up and say, the ball's in your court, it would be an interesting test for you. And I think it will give you clarity um, in terms of how your partner really feels about you or how this person that you're dating, you know, it's almost going to force them to think a little bit instead of just, like I was saying, flounder and just sort of go with the flow and, and not really have anything concrete that he brings to the table. Uh, and again, I, I don't advocate that. I don't advocate manipulation or anything like that. I don't feel that that is something healthy in relationships. But sometimes situations come up where, like I say, it's a natural test. It just I know, kind of happens organically. And I feel that that's kind of how this is going to play out. Um, you can just sort of let them do their thing and they will either dig their own grave or they will come out shiny and sparkly and awesome and like you'll fall even deeper in love with them like it could go either way um and it just is the way it is right it's kind of in <laughs> like it's their responsibility to like get things together and Wheel of Fortune, if you've been watching me for a while, you know how much I love the Wheel of Fortune card because it, it is that promise, okay? And it is a promise. It is a major arcana. It is an inevitability. It is a promise that you will understand the purpose, that you will understand the reason, um, and that also a promise that the universe will take care of it. Right? The universe will um, take, care, I mean, take care of it, yeah, but like, this is a piece of a puzzle, and I feel that you will understand why this had to happen at some point in time. And we kind of always do, hindsight is twenty twenty, and, you know, that's kind of just the nature of life, but... Um, this is a promise that you you will understand it. There's not going to be any open-ended questions here. Um, why did they behave that way? Why did they do it? You will have the answer. Maybe not right now, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next week, but at some point in time, you will have the answer as to why this little situation had to happen. I don't feel like this is really severe. I don't feel like this is like a huge deal. For some some of you, maybe, you know, if you have kind of a squirrely partner and they're kind of non-committal and not really like in it to win it, um, like I said, this is where they will dig their own grave. This is where they will, they'll make sure it doesn't happen. And it, I don't feel like it's really going to affect you so much, right? I mean, sorry, bump the, bump the camera, but you have, you know, opportunity here to either work things out or not, um, you have the opportunity for things to be great <laughs> or not. And, and it's going to really be determining based on their behavior. And I think it will give you a very clear idea of who this person really is. I think that you will really begin to not only see, but to understand um, true colors true natures. Some of them, some of your partners, some of your boyfriends and girlfriends out there 
will be really amazing people and really high quality. And some of you, you're gonna start seeing, well, maybe they're kind of shysty. Maybe they're really not that great. It really can go either way. And um, from there, you will be able to leverage the situation into something better. That's the promise of the Three of Pentacles, leveraging your experience, your knowledge, um, the things in which you've lived, uh, or the things through which you've lived, sorry, um, you'll be able to leverage those things into something better. Okay, so let me pull out some more cards. This is a very interesting reading. Like I said, it doesn't have to be always so heavy. I know we've had a couple of heavy months over the past couple of months, so maybe a lighter reading is best. Let me just do three little shuffles. Yeah, I mean, Two of Cups reverse. There's still the promise of that Two of Cups, whether reverse or not. I mean, the promise of a quality relationship, but in the reversal, I am seeing some like really severe misunderstandings or some really severe miscommunications. And I, I don't think it's you. I think it's your partner is being very unclear. Their motive is unclear. Their intent is, it, it makes you feel um, but the thing is, is that I don't think that you're going to be really affected by it. It's sort of like you are sort of a third party, innocent bystander, sort of watching them as they mess up almost, or as they like make these mistakes and you're just like uninvolved. Like I said, I don't see a huge amount of emotional involvement here. It's really, I mean, it's like this. And then you over here, Claire over here, sort of watching everything, sort of, um, and it's weird because you can be a part of the relationship and also like a bystander at the same time. And I mean, Knight of Swords, so your partner too, okay? Whatever changes, I feel like their understanding of what's going on, <laughs> their understanding of like how ridiculous maybe that they're being, they're not going to realize quickly. They're not going to understand quickly. They're not going to make amends quickly. Like they're just not going to really get it. They're not good at maybe analyzing their own behavior or, you know, really they're not very self-conscious, not self-conscious in like the self-esteem way, but, you know, very self-aware. Um, but death again, same with wheel of fortune. There is a promise that this will come to an end that maybe their ridiculousness, and I do feel that maybe they will come to you with an apology, maybe. It's really gonna be up to you whether you take it or not. Again, depending on how, and I'm gonna use the word ridiculous because I feel like this behavior will be just that. It will be ridiculous. It will be strange and a little bizarre, and you might be like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you saying these things? This doesn't make any sense. So what, like, where is this coming from? Remember that it's coming from a fear of progress, okay? A fear, and, and they're simply sabotaging themselves on purpose because they just don't know. They're having like a mini freak out and they don't quite know exactly what to do. All right, and they don't know how to move in, in a direction. But an apology may come, okay? Whether you wanna take that apology or not is up to you. But uh, again, short-lived. It's not gonna last forever. It might be just a blip on the radar. Just allow it to unfold, see what happens. Because, you know, and don't make any dramatic decisions. Don't make any, you know, really, really big decisions based on this because we're all allowed to be afraid. We are all allowed to make mistakes. Sometimes you just need to make those mistakes and then you never make them again. So um, this point of ridiculousness and silliness and immaturity and lack of sensitivity toward you, 
again, I don't really feel like you're going to be affected. You're the emperor and you're just like, whatever, like, okay, fine, be, make mistakes, fine, whatever. Um, but it will come to an end. I mean, there's a promise here that it will not last forever and it won't, um, it won't continue on into the future. Okay, this is a very uh, interesting reading. Like I said, it's very light. It's not uh, so heavy, which I think is good and well deserved for you, for you and for anybody. Because it's I know September was a really, really, um, was a really heavy month for a lot of people. So I don't accept that one. I don't want that one. Okay, so what we're going to do now is your general reading. So focusing more in terms of finance and career and family and health. Okay, hopefully. And any other messages that you are meant to receive. Okay. Aries for October. Well, sometimes we do get love elements in here, and I will speak to that, um, but try to keep it more open form if I can. Hopefully you can see all those. Okay, so in the very center we have the chariot. And I mean, we really have one, two, three, four major arcana in the reading. So maybe a little bit heavier in terms of, of the, the energies, maybe a little more influence here for this month for you. Um, I feel that there might be some work influence happening here, okay, with the Knight of Pentacles. The chariot, though, concerns me a little bit, okay? We have the two, or the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the high priestess, and we have the moon. And the moon, you know, high priestess is the keeper of the moon, the keeper of the unknown, the subconscious. She is the direct line with our higher selves and um, the keeper of secrets. And I feel that there is a dark, when I say dark, I mean an unconscious or subconscious, something like underlying current, right? Some underlying current of, of something in your life. And... I don't like the chariot so much. It's not my favorite card um, because to me, it does indicate that that classic, and I say it in every reading almost, I feel like that head versus the heart, logic versus passion. And I think, and I'm wondering if these aren't questions about life and career and direction and maybe even some of you are getting bored with where you are and bored with your clients, bored with your customers, bored with your employers, and feeling like career progress is not happening, all right? And um, I don't know if you would specifically admit that, right? Because we have those sub subconscious elements and yet I feel like there is maybe a little bit of soul searching going on here. And there's a little bit of disconnect with your purpose in life, all right? And again, I feel like last month we had a lot of these higher, bigger existential types of readings, um, which I don't think this is so big and grandiose for you. But there may be an introduction of some opportunity, okay, or some new adventure, right? It sort of lights a spark within you. And it sort of ignites some form of passion within you as well. Now, this could be a job opportunity, an opportunity to travel. 
Um, and I love this Knight of Wands energy. It's such a light-footed energy and it's like fun and optimistic and joyful. And like, this is one of my favorite cards um, in terms of the, the Knights. It, he's just, like I say, he's light, light-footed and, and feels optimistic. Like the eternal optimist is really how I see him. And, uh, and as a fire sign, as a fire energy, okay, when you have an ace of wands coming in and sort of igniting this knight of wands energy within you, um, it kind of puts you at the best of your Aries self, right? Which we all love Aries. You're super fun, super outgoing. You love to laugh. You love to have fun. Um, but you can also take life very seriously as well. But sometimes the seriousness of life can contradict the fun of life. And I think there's an internal battle within you, fun versus serious, right? How hard do I want to work? Because this is the workhorse, right? This is the one that puts his foot down and you know stays and works those extra hours and delivers. And this is the flake, the one that wants to just like give up and be like, ah, screw it, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, screw it, it doesn't really matter. Screw it, it's not important. I just want to go out and have drinks with my girlfriends tonight. Or I just want to um, go take that trip with my, my boyfriend or my girlfriend and just, you know, sort of abdicate the responsibility. And that can be a challenge when you're kind of feeling those two sides of yourself because it exhausts you right? It, it pulls you down. Um, because when you have this battle, you feel guilty when you're having fun. And then when you're doing the work, you feel guilty for not enjoying life. And there's no win. There's no win situation. You're, you're always on the losing team here. And that makes me sad and a little bit frustrated for you because when life hands you lemonade you just want to maybe you know add some vodka and just go have a good time <laughs> you know because this is lemonade this is good things this is a opportunity for for something that you want something that you want to do and i think you want to take hold of that wand and you want to take hold of the the experience and, and embrace it and enjoy it but yet somehow within you you're you're going to guilt yourself for not working okay you're going to guilt yourself for not um, creating the amount of money that you want for not having that type of lifestyle that you want because you you are not working enough, you know? And, and again, that pulls you down to a point of exhaustion. It pulls you down to a point of um, like physically feeling tired and physically just being burnt out, right? Because when you're in a constant state of feeling like you're losing or in a constant state of feeling like you're not living life the right way or you're not living life to its fullest, it gives you anxiety. It's like that fear. It's like, oh my God, I haven't done anything on my bucket list. I really need to go skydiving in Dubai or I really need to, you know, read that book or I really, you know, whatever it is. I mean, it's tiring. And it's sort of an internal battle within yourself, which, which is never productive, right? And what's interesting is when we have the lovers reverse, lovers can speak in romance, right, of course, but it can also speak in terms of choice and personal choice. And I feel as though this chariot, this battle, this black versus white, this work versus fun, right, this clash, is a wedge, right? And we have the wedge here between the two people. And when you drive a wedge within yourself and within how your life, you're sort of rendered, it's like analysis paralysis, right? You can't move, you can't make a good decision because you're kind of overthinking it now. And you're not sure exactly where and how things will line up or how things will, will continue. Um, but I'm going to tell you something, okay? 
not anything you don't already know, but something that I think a lot of you might... I feel like I'm going to give you a pass, okay? <laughs> like, here's your ticket, go for it, you know? Whatever opportunity presents itself this month for you, an this is an opportunity for fun, okay? Or uh, even in a business perspective, you know, doing something that you love to create money or doing something that you, you know, whatever. Something that excites you, that makes you feel this way instead of this way. It's in line with the Ace of Cups, all right? And Ace of Cups is a promise for emotional fulfillment. It's a promise for having a grateful heart. Somehow, the more we work, the harder we work, the, the more time we spend on things, somehow we don't feel as satisfied as when we do things in life that we actually enjoy doing. Like taking a Saturday to go to the beach or to taking the few hours each night to read that book that you love or, you know, to go for a walk when the fall leaves are changing colors and embracing the beauty of nature and, and feeling a part of something bigger, you know? And this is, I think, where you will find the joy and the solace in your life. I'm not saying give up. All right, I think you kind of have a, um, a, dich a dichotomy, I think, here. But um, obviously, you still need to go to work. Obviously, you still need to create money for yourself. But this is kind of maybe an opportunity for you to truly learn a lesson of the true value of money in your life, of learning the true value of hard work in your life, and what role it plays versus the true value of enjoying life and the value of doing things that you enjoy and finding an interesting balance between the two where you don't have to feel guilty for not working and having fun but you also don't have to feel guilty for not having fun okay you you need to find a separation okay and i feel that that's kind of what this wedge is and like I said, this unconscious or this subconscious level, um, you might not recognize this battle happening within you right away. It might be very subtle, it might be very quiet, but if you come home at the end of the day and you're not doing things that you love to do, you know, this is interesting, interesting about time and how we spend our hours in our day. And when you're 85 years old and you look back on your life, you know, will you be able to say that you did everything you wanted to do? Will you be able to say that you lived life in the way that you wanted to live life? Some of you say, well, I need a private jet and a yacht in order to enjoy my life, so I need to work really, really hard now. Well, that's a personal choice. And if that's what makes you happy, then that's fine, but don't feel left out and don't feel guilty for, for working or for not having fun now, you know? It's a choice, personal choice, and, and getting really in touch with your personal beliefs and getting in touch with the things that you truly value. Do you truly value time with your family or do you truly value time at your office? And it's okay, either way, whatever you really truly value, um, just go for it and don't feel guilty for not doing the other thing, okay? Um, okay, interesting reading. Okay, three shuffles. Oops, that doesn't count. The universe will be very generous to you, okay? Um, getting those values in order, getting those values straight, getting, you know, how you really truly want to live your life, getting that figured out, getting that in order, 
and embracing the opportunities that are presenting themselves to you this month or in the next upcoming couple of months, the universe will repay you most likely in ways that you cannot even begin to imagine. What's interesting is this state of this Queen of Swords state coming in. Again, this is a more overlying energy of being unclear. Sometimes you don't know that something is an opportunity, all right? Sometimes you don't know what things will come. Sometimes all you need to do is start taking a few little steps. And, you know, I don't know why I'm reminded of that old movie. I know they made a new one, but I grew up with the old one, um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I know it was a book and everything. Um, but when, you know, they found the pathway in the wardrobe, and, um, you know, it just took a little bit of curiosity, right? It just took a little bit of wondering and wondering what it would be like. And, you know, sometimes life brings you magic and brings you magical moments. And they're always there. Those moments are always there. Those opportunities are always there. And sometimes, you know, you don't always have to know and you don't always have to understand what will come of it. If it's not completely in line with your big, you know, life purpose and your big life journey and all of that, it's okay, you know? And, and I feel this card for me goes in, in two different ways. Um, sometimes it can be a very positive card, which is not normal. Normally it's a more of a negative connotation, however, when I first pulled this card out, it gave me the positive connotation like right away. And I feel like there's a bad habit happening within you where you become so consumed with work or on the other side, too consumed with having fun that you, you know, you're not, not taking care of yourself, right? Um, but I feel that this card is more of a victory for you, all right? A victory over bad habits a victory over recurring themes. And that's, I feel, is something to be celebrated, right? Um, if you are so stuck in a pattern and so stuck in a lifestyle, um, this is an opportunity for you to break it up, shake it up, give yourself some variety in your life. Um, and even though you might not understand it entirely, I do feel that there is good, and it's weird, I don't always see this card as being positive, but I'm definitely like, I'm feeling joy for you, I'm feeling happiness for you and excitement for you, because I think there's something coming um, that will sort of alleviate this frustration and alleviate this like feeling totally broken and feeling totally exhausted. Um, and that you will find joy and love in, in your life doing something that you really truly love. Not that you're totally going to quit your job and, you know, not be making money or anything, but that um, your, your life can take a very interesting turn, um, a turn for the better, all right? And, um, and I'm excited for you. And don't overanalyze. You don't have to overanalyze it. Just let it come, let it unfold naturally, and, uh, and it will, okay? So that's it, Aries, for you. Thank you so much for watching, and um, hopefully I will see you next month um, for November's reading. Thanks. Bye.